Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Trucking Tower podcast. I'm very excited to be joined today by Jesse Zarati, who is Principal Director, Supply Chain Operations Strategy and Consulting at Accenture. How are you doing today, Jesse? Very good. Thank you, Andy, for having me in the podcast. Thank you for coming on with me. You know, supply chain has been in the news recently quite a bit, and I was looking forward to talking with you about keys to success and how to overcome challenges of We're going to be talking about that today. Uh, Just to kick things off, I want to thank our sponsor, Zero Down Supply Chain Solutions, powered by Freight Optics. If you would like to reduce your spend on parcel mail and LTL, along with better visibility and control on your freight operations, please click the link below and we'll get you all squared away. So just to give our audience a little bit of background, Jesse, um, who are you surrounded with and what inspired you to do what you do today? Perfect. I mean, when I started my career, I, I started as an engineer. By, by education, I studied uh, mechanical engineering, industrial engineering. And um, one of the things I found out early in my career is the difference or the distance between the designers and the executors. Mm-hmm. Um, so I work closely with the designers to begin with, but then I always find out the way that operations struggle to either manufacture or get uh, products from point A to B. It's a lot more complex than just designing it. And so I always had the eager to help them do their, their job better. And uh, one of the things that I, that I did at the beginning, it was really to mine the gap. So I was, I was the guy that was actually going to the design engineers or, or the planners to change their plans because they were not able to execute it. Right. And so, so I always had that in, in my mind, right? We have to design and plan and have a vision of a, of the supply chain that can be executed and, and then improved. So, so I guess that was one of the, the main reasons why I focused on, on, on supply chain thereafter. I, I saw that there was a, a big gap between these two and also had the opportunity and I guess the, uh, the luck to work with CEOs that had a vision and they, the companies that I work with grew really fast. Uh, so therefore I had the, the task and the responsibility to really make that vision a reality by executing correctly. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, you know, we had to really bring up the best solutions that we could at that point in time to, to, to serve our clients. Absolutely. And we were talking a little bit offline. You've worked a lot of places overseas, internationally. Yes, that's right. I worked, of course, in the U.S. for many years, a couple of different companies. Uh, I also work in Latin America, pretty much all Latin America. Uh, I work in Asia Pac, Asia Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Singapore, uh, Singapore, and then of course Asia in um, in Hong Kong. I also spent a couple of years in in Europe, uh, UK and Madrid, uh, which was pretty different, but it was it was great experience. Absolutely, I was like I have an engineering degree as well, industrial engineering for me, and was lucky enough to work in nine countries. And it's amazing all the steps involved in the uh, supply chain, especially these days. Um, and there's a lot to in, involved in optimizing a supply chain and making sure the products get out on time and so forth. So um, awesome experiences, I'm sure, with all of your um, overseas you know, experience and seeing all those different operations. That's got to be extremely helpful. Yeah, definitely. And, and quite honestly, I mean, we have, I think we are fortunate in the U.S. that things are simpler in, in, in many instances than other countries because they have taxation differences, they have legislation differences, they have a lot of uh, constrained uh, uh, rules of, of, of trading product from places to places. So, so I guess in the U.S. it's, it's a little more streamlined. Uh, therefore, I think supply chains in other countries are, are a little more complicated. Right. Absolutely. Um, I'll never forget one quick story. When I was in Singapore working over there for about eight months, we had to lift equipment onto the third floor of the warehouse because they build the warehouses up. So you had to load all the equipment in from the side of the building. I'll never forget the crane and bringing all the equipment in. That was really something else. But, you know, um, in terms of order fulfillment, what would you say are two or three of the key challenges facing companies today? Uh, there is constraint in inventory in many industries. So fulfillment of orders is a little tricky because there's not enough supply. So there has to be some type of, um, of, of, uh, of decision uh, 
decision making um, process to get this product to the clients that really need it. And then, of course, finding substitutions of products for the ones that are not going to get exactly what they want. So, so fulfillment from that sense, uh, the supply is, is, is actually creating a lot of problems. And then the other issue that I've been seeing uh, a lot is really the uh, behavior changes in consumers. People have already learned how to purchase products and have it delivered to their homes. Uh, I think the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the people that, that they were not used to doing that before, they were forced, and now they're sticking to that, uh, that way of purchasing products. So that order fulfillment has changed in the sense of what you can offer to your clients. You need to be able to provide more of an om omni-channel experience to your clients, not only sending to retail um, channels, but also going online. But I guess there is a level of complexity. Now, clients not only want the product to be online and sent to their houses, but they also want it same day or next day at the, at the most. So right. that, that creates a huge complexity for order fulfillment uh, because uh, companies now need to start developing omnichannel capabilities, which after what, 2020, really Amazon was, was one of the few ones that could provide this capability and then retailers started following. But now I think everybody has jumped in the wagon and they need to because uh, client behavior has changed and has changed for, I think, for good. Um, we, we did a couple of studies back uh, in 2021 that, that we jumped uh, <clears throat> 15, we jumped five years uh, in actually two, three months where we thought we were going to be in e-commerce fulfillment uh, uh, be between 2020 and 2021. Right. Absolutely. It fast-tracked a lot. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. We, we fast-tracked a lot. So now I think consumer behavior is making things complicated for companies and fulfilling their products. Absolutely. So in, you know, in terms of success, what would you say are two or three keys to overcoming the challenges? Companies need to start thinking of how do we get to the clients uh, in, a, in, a, in a faster way. And for that, not many companies have enough uh, financial power to, to implement those capabilities. But there is partners. There is partners that are doing already last mile services. There is partners that are doing fulfillment, uh, that are localized inventory. I mean, there is, there is still uh, challenges. It's really about where you put your inventory and how you actually distribute, but there is partners that can help you with that, especially for the medium and, and small size companies. Large companies can have a little more financial power to develop those themselves uh, or partner up with the big, with the big players such as uh, Amazon or Target or Best Buy or, 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 or one of the chain uh, supermarkets that have enough um, uh, spread on the market and, and are able to actually reach the clients in, in a faster way. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anymore, it's almost like second nature. You go online, you order, you have a delivery plan, uh, ETA and all of those things. But it wasn't too many years ago that none of that was really a, a, a thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's changed. And it's changed really rapidly in the last five years or so. Um, you know, uh, in terms of connecting with you, Jesse, what are the best ways for people to contact you? The best way to reach uh, me is really LinkedIn. I think uh, in, in this professional or network uh, platform, we, we kind of learn how to connect each other within the platform. So if, if somebody wants to write or, 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 or connect with me, I think that would be the best method. Okay. Very good. And uh, what would you say as a final word of advice for our friends out there listening or watching today? Right. I think, um, listen, one of, one of the things that I always tell my kids and, uh, and, and I kind of live by it is always keep learning. I mean, there's right. so much more things that, that, that we don't know. And, and if you have any interest, just keep learning, keep getting factual data. I mean, the internet has given us the ability to capture so much more information that we couldn't have before. So now the information is at your hands. It's really about us educating ourselves, brainstorming, networking with other people, 
I mean, the best solutions to, to business problems came up from social conversations, brainstorming sessions uh, that actually are created in a way that then there, thereafter could be a big business or a big, uh, a big story to tell. Absolutely. I'm a huge proponent of always be learning, you know, never stop learning. There's always new things happening all the time. So you have to keep up as best you can anyway. So uh, great advice. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today, Jesse. Thanks again for coming on. Thank you, Andy. A pleasure to be here. Happy to participate in the podcast. And I really appreciate that. Um, That's going to do it for today's Trucking Tower podcast. Thanks for joining, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.